got the Duramax uh, 20 horsepower. Here's its stats right there. Uh, so basically, it's the largest production single cylinder on the market right now from Duramax. It's basically a stage one 440 without the stage one. 500 cc's. Warehouses out here in uh, Ontario, uh, California. Inside the box, right here on the top, we got a nice little little start menu here. Start here. How's your instructions? Comes with some stickers. Free stickers. That's what's up. Welcome to the Duramax family. Explains to you all about your warranty, all about the engine itself pretty cool stuff here all right so we got her unboxed here She's pretty as ever the nice cobalt blue comes with your you know your accessories your spark plug wrench oil filler uh, your keyway is attached Comes with a very large exhaust port. So we're gonna have to find out what exhaust fits that, or we're gonna have to build something that's uh, custom for it. Most likely we'll be going to a Makuni carb uh, for this setup. We got the on and off switch right there, the kill on the side. Uh, this is the non-electric start, so this is the pull start model. So the first things we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to remove the, the plastic governor gear out of here. So the first thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to be removing these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, crankcase bolts here. And we're going to pull off this uh, cover right here. Since it's brand new, we're going to try to keep this gasket on there. I need a rubber mallet. No, it's coming right up. If you want to do video, you can... Looks like we kept the gasket nice and tight and intact. So we're going to be removing that low pressure oil sensor down in there. Uh, the, we're going to clip off the, the governor right there. And then we're going to get rid of that plastic governor gear right there. Because we don't want to be governed. Flip out that guy right there. And we snapped it off. Now we got to find it. It fell down somewhere in there. All right. And we cut off that piece. So now this... It's not flopping around in there. Now we're going to remove this low pressure oil sensor in there. So I had to remove this guy. And I'll show you how to put it back in at the mark of the teeth. Move that last bolt right there. Alright, 
So now you're going to come in here with some dikes. I'm going to cut the low pressure oil swimser wire as short as you can. And voila, no more low pressure oil sensor. To put the cam gear back in, there's a little dot right here. Alright, so you want to realign those two dots when you put the cam gear back in. So that this dot and that dot right there are lined up. There's a little marking. That's where you want to put it back at. Attempt to remove the governor gear. So we tried to tap it from the other side, but that wasn't working out very well. So I think we're going to have to choose violence on this guy. Alright, so now I did enough breaking away until I could get to that, that hog ring down there that holds it on. There's a little metal ring that, that holds this whole thing on. So you keep breaking up pieces until you can get to that, that hog ring right there. And then you're going to have to remove that, that hog ring to get this, the rest of this off. So I was able to use a pry uh, to get it up. Just take the governor gears out and make sure there's no extra random washers that are going to come out on you. And looks like it's just that one washer underneath there. And governor gear has been removed with violence. All right. So we got the, the governor little lever here uh, chopped off with the bolt cutters. We got the low pressure oil sensor removed and nipped off. And we have the governor gear removed. Um, so now we're going to put it back on here since the gasket wasn't damaged. Uh, we're going to reuse that. And then make sure that these two dowel pins are in here and not lost somewhere. And it looks like there's only two dowel pins. Alright, now we're going to put the, the bolts back in. Come back down so with a with a 13 millimeter so about that tight or whatever the manufacturer torque specs are but I'm gonna do it that tight So it appears to be all tight now. So let's throw some oil, some gas in here, and let's fire her up. All right. So the oil that we're going to be using is this uh, 10 1540. Uh, the recommended oil for this one is 30 weight. However, I use this in a lot of single cylinders, uh, such as my Honda XR 650L that's air cooled, and it works out really well. And well, we're hotter, we're hotter than Hades out here in Yuma, Arizona. So. It's not bad to have the extra protection. 
We're gonna fill it up with the conveniently supplied from Duramax, a little oil filler. So you only fill it up until you see it halfway into the drain plug right there and you're good to go. So I removed the oil sensor so it gives me about uh, two ounces more oil in there than the, than the average. Alright, time to fire up this big beast. The little dash is to on. Turn the fuel on. Choke is on. We're at low throttle right now. Uh, let's break her in. That was weird. Okay. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know why. Let's try it again. Let's see. Maybe because I removed the governor. Oh, whoops. A little bit more. So if you remove the governor, you're going to have to reverse that governor spring and do the, the governor bypass throttle setup uh, like I've done in the on the 440 video. A uh, small bump in the road, but I'll fire you it up and, and show you what I mean. Looks like I'm not going to be able to break it in on the table. It's going to be have to be a field break in on the water. But we're going to put a long tail kit on here from Mud Skipper and see what a 500cc does. Uh, most likely we're going to be modding the exhaust here because I'm not sure what exhaust port that is. So we'll probably put a custom exhaust on here. The front the carburetor here it will go to a stage one or you could put a Makuni carburetor on it but most likely I will be doing Makuni and we'll be getting this on that in the next episode all right so reversing the governor spring is pretty easily so you'll have to remove the governor spring from here pull it out to here you can put it through one of these two holes right here. 
like so. It's gonna go over here and it's gonna stick to right there. But you're gonna have to cut it down just slightly uh, to make sure that it stays fit. Or you can put it, wrap it around that, that tank bolt right there, but I'm just gonna go to there. All right, so I'm gonna trim it to about right there. Snip it off. Take some pliers, twist it, make another bend in it. Like so. And then I'm probably gonna trim off just the excess right there. And the shape. Pull it up. All right, so you're gonna grab it, put some tension on there, and you're gonna hook it in there. And then now, it's not a full throttle no more. So it's a nice and springy. So grab that governor arm right there. Nice and springy. And the throttle cable is gonna hook onto here and the throttle cable barrel is going to be this way and it's going to feed right onto the governor arm so you're going to pull your throttle cable from this side and we'll do that on our next episode so that's no throttle right now and then it moving this way full throttle full throttle no throttle full throttle and no throttle and that's how you reverse the government. Oh god, that's more.